So before we get into this video, I just feel the need to show you guys <laughs> this um, outfit that I bought. I've been trying this new thing called like not making all my clothes and buying things at stores sometimes. And uh, apparently it's a pretty, pretty fun thing. I've been really into animal prints, so. That's my vibe now, animal prints. Also, if you're wondering, I'm in my boyfriend's apartment. <laughs> I am bogarting his apartment to film videos from time to time. And it's just so comfy and I like it. And there's like natural sunlight, it's a whole thing. Anyway, we're here to watch Love and Leashes, which is a Korean movie about BDSM. If for some reason this is the first time you're clicking on one of my videos, you have no clue who I am. My name is Kat Black and I am a BDSMer. I am a BDSM submissive and I like to watch movies about BDSM and sort of figure out how real or not real they are. A lot of BDSM media is trash and so I've been kind of on the quest to find like a BDSM film that feels relatable to my experiences. Now, I am a huge whopping piece of K-pop trash, and this movie is starring one of the members from one of my favorite all-time K-pop groups, Sonoshide. And so I'm so excited to watch this because I'm pretty surprised about this movie being an actual thing, to be honest with you guys. I have always seen Sohyun, I believe is how you say it. My Korean is terrible. I've always seen her as a very kind of conservative person, so I'm very curious how this is gonna turn out. Korean society, from my understanding, is a very honorific society. It is one where you are supposed to formally address certain people by your relationship to them, their age, et cetera, et cetera. So there probably are in Korean society more, I would say, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, of a desire to have that sharp hierarchy and power imbalance and power play. And I'm realizing that this is the first Korean movie that I've seen that deals with the subject of BDSM. So I'm very curious to learn some stuff about it watching this movie. I'm just gonna come back with my thoughts. If you're into that kind of content, we make it sometimes on this channel, so subscribe. And I guess I will come back with my thoughts. As we go. 두 사람이 만나면 의도했든 아니든 권력은 한쪽으로 기울죠. 어쩌면 우리 마음 속엔 본능적으로 누굴 지배하거나 아님 누군가에게 복종하고픈 무의식이 숨어 있을지도 모르죠. So we're already like three minutes into the movie, and I already have thoughts. So there's a character Ji Woo and Ji Hu. I'm still trying to figure out which one is which. It just started, but it's established really early on that So Yun's character is not respected at work. She is in a situation where they have to pick a YouTuber for some sort of advertisements that they're doing and she's concerned about the youtuber because the youtuber has made some homophobic comments and the boss is like well i don't know was he homophobic or was he just uncomfortable and like kind of really shot down her advice to not go with this youtuber then this guy who is brand new <laughs> brand fucking new comes in and says you know what i think we should wait about it of course the boss is like oh wow that's great why can't you be more like him it's like a very clear expression of sexism <laughs> Oh my God, okay, so this movie is so good so far. So basically what happens is, I still don't know which one's Jihoo and Jiwoo, but that's, 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 important to the plot because their names are similar. Apparently they have also the same last name. Soyeon's character has a crush on the new guy and he is now on the PR team and he's really popular and there's a package that comes into the mail room and she comes and picks it up thinking it's her package. He, after going to the, the office and seeing that his package has been picked up, rushes to the office to make sure that she doesn't open it. And of course she's already opened it and she pulls out a dog collar. And uh, he tries to play it off. He's like, nah, this is like for my poodle or whatever. And she's like, your poodle has a thick ass neck. That poodle is a very, very big poodle. And he's like, uh, no, she works out or whatever. <laughs> 
And then the box knocks over and a flyer for the BDSM gear pops out and <laughs> the secret is out. <laughs> and she is obviously intrigued, I'll just say. And part of her character is that she is being told by everyone that she needs to smile more, be more pleasant. But she apparently is a bit more of a harsh person. <laughs> yeah, I'm a damn fool watching this movie. So first of all, they both have crushes on each other, but they're not talking about it. And um, <laughs> basically what happens is the next day, Jihoo is at work and Jiwoo is not there. And he's like, where is she? Because he wants to like thank her for being secretive. He starts to draft this text message thanking her for keeping his secret. And as he's doing that, he sees her walking down the hallway and he's like standing in like some storage closet. I think that they work at some like children's entertainment company or something, but he's in the closet and she sees that she's about to come in. And so he puts on this mask and acts like he's not there, which is of course incredibly fucking awkward. And so of course, of course Ji Wu is like, what the fuck is going on? And so she walks up to him and he falls over and hits his head, takes off the mask. Obviously it's him. And she's like, you need to go to the hospital. I'm taking you to the hospital. And um, after he gets out, she apologizes to him. She says, I'm sorry that I was bossing you around like that. I actually have the tendency to be like that. What's that about? What's that about? And I guess what I want to share <laughs> is that a lot of times when people talk about um, dominant in BDSM, I mean, when people conceptualize it, they think of a dominant as somebody who's doing all of this like abusive shit to you. But really a dominant, and if you're like in a true power exchange relationship with a dominant, is that he is very invested in your own self betterment. So if you have a hard time taking care of yourself, he is going to be the person who says, you need to take care of yourself. You're going to take care of yourself. That is my demand. And I'm going to assume that that is how this is starting. After they have that conversation, he gets really excited because he was talking on a forum earlier about how sometimes people get fired for being into BDSM at their jobs, which is very true. A lot of people are secretive about BDSM because in a lot of places, it is the thing that can be used to fire you. And he gets like really, really excited when she says that she has a tendency to boss people around because he thinks that she's into BDSM. Like, I don't know if she's into BDSM or not. I don't know if she's into BDSM or not. I don't know if she's into BDSM or not. I don't know if she's into BDSM or not. Not really knowing that that's not exactly what she's saying. And it's clear that he's the one who is submissive. He literally says, please call me a dog name and, and, and treat me this way, da 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 da. He's really, really eager, which is just like which is just like a submissive man, eager and sometimes quite pushy. But he's the more experienced one, even though he's a submissive and she is obviously completely inexperienced, even though she lives her life in somewhat of a dominant way. And we're gonna see how this turns, but I did wanna share that for a lot of people, their BDSM is an escape from the way that they usually are. So for me in my daily life, I would say that I'm not a very socially submissive person. I have to, for many reasons, be all about controlling myself and my shit because I can't really be allowed the freedom to relax and to, you know, be anything other than in control. So I enjoy giving my control to um, a partner because that is a safe place for me to be able to do that. So it's not always that people are like that, but you know, sometimes it goes the way that you live your life too. I 
honestly think that this is like the most realistic thing I've seen when it comes to BDSM shit. So basically what happens is it's awkward now. She knows that he's into BDSM. He knows that she doesn't know about BDSM. He's embarrassed. And so they have this, this work function that they do and she's kind of avoiding him. And he takes this really personally and starts crying after the event. What he doesn't know is that the day before she had gotten some advice from a friend that basically said, give him space, give him time to process it or whatever, and just make sure that he doesn't feel too embarrassed, right? And so she was doing that. And so, <laughs> of course, he took that so hard and she sees him crying and is like, what are you doing? Why are you crying? And then explains what happened. And he shifts immediately into, well, we should maybe enter into a, di a dynamic. You should be my master. <laughs> and the reason why I say this is so realistic is because a lot of submissive men are like this. Like I am always broadcasting because I have to, that I am not a dominant person. I'm not going to dominate you. If you've been following my channel for a while, you already know that my introduction to BDSM was this really fucked up traumatic experience I had when I was 19, when this guy forced me to dominate him after um, rescuing me from a really bad date. So I have a lot of like trauma wrapped up in the idea of me dominating someone and so it really bothers me when men approach me to be dominated so one of the things that I know so frequently I experience when I have these conversations with submissive men is that they are often quite pushy. <laughs> and I think it's because for a lot of submissive men, they don't really require a lot of like what I would require. So for me personally, I don't want to bottom for anybody unless I know that they know what they're doing. I've noticed that a lot of men, especially when they haven't had a lot of experience actually with bottoming, they don't really care as much about the person being aware or safe. They usually just care about them being hot. And obviously that's not true for everyone, but I've just noticed that. And I guess for me, I see that really clearly because the, the, the real reality of it is if you want me to top you, if you want me to dominate you, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing or how to do it. And so you're not gonna get a satisfactory thing from me and I feel like I always make that really clear but I'm constantly having to explain it and I know why people think I'm a dom it's because I'm a tall black woman who likes herself another conversation for another day anyway I just felt like jumping right back in and sharing that because it just made me think a lot about just how realistic this was and it's interesting a lot of times when you see submissive men depicted in films they are often uh, depicted as sniveling and he is kind of sniveling I guess but he's also popular people like him he is the new guy that everybody likes so that is kind of a, a, an interesting and unique way of depicting a submissive man in film this keeps getting cuter and cuter. So basically what happens is Ji Woo comes back the next day and after thinking over it is like, hey, maybe I can be your master. And then she goes home and does a bunch of research and comes back with a contract. They sign the contract and basically she's gonna be his master for three months. And it seems like things are starting out really, really well. Now, I have to say that one of the things I really love about this movie is there is such an expression of care. And what I mean by that is so frequently in these films, BDSM is filmed as like this really upsetting, dangerous thing that the women involved shouldn't be interested in or shouldn't be enjoying. And here we have two people enthusiastically consenting who are both rather inexperienced, trying to figure out a dynamic with each other. And it just feels more egalitarian that way. Do you know what I mean? They go to a hotel and it's kind of like a love hotel, I guess you could say. And they try to do a scene. And Ji Hu is clearly into like doggy play and things like that. And so she basically tells him to stop speaking like a human, start speaking like a dog. And when he hears sex going on all around him, he starts barking very loudly. They get a noise complaint and they have to leave. But in the process of him doing the doggy play, he hurt himself and didn't really mention it. But the next day she mentions to him, hey, 
I'm really sorry if I wasn't properly prepared for this because you got hurt and that's my fault. And that is the kind of humility and understanding that I personally really, really, really re respect from a Dom. I wonder if some of the more healthy things we're seeing in this film are related to the fact that this is a woman being dominant and a man being submissive because so frequently a lot of the other stuff I've watched that's just so steeped in this very heteronormative toxicity that just like isn't healthy but there's really nothing in this film yet that I've seen that has not been healthy so I'm loving this so far I got postmates <laughs> 궁금한 거 있으면 언제든지 물어봐요 네? 아, 저 아주 괜찮습니다. 다들 지호 선배 무섭지 않냐고 걱정해 주시는데 전 그런 면이 너무 좋아요. 어떤 면이요? 괜히 돌려서 얘기 안 하고 딱 짚어서 알려주시거든요. 무섭게 얘기하실 때는 묘하게 so I murdered my Postmates. Basically where we are in the movie right now is that Jihoon is getting a bit jealous because there's a new guy in the office and Jiwoon has to train him. At the same time, it's also obvious that Jiwoon is getting jealous in her own way as well. She's starting to see some of the women in the office pay him attention and so she really wants to kind of push the relationship further. It's clear that Jiwoon has a sexual attraction to Jihoon and wants for it to be more to the point where she's even on forums asking about whether or not it's normal for you to have a non-sexual relationship with your BDSM partner. And you know what? I have a lot of things to say about this because there have been times where I've been in a dynamic with somebody and it was completely non-sexual. I was bottoming for a guy for a good year or so and I was always kind of wondering if it would ever go there, but it never did. And I'm kind of okay with it. But you know, I do remember being a bit frustrated that like our relationship wasn't that as well. Because sometimes when you enter into a dynamic with someone, even if you're not attracted to them in a lot of other ways, you do become connected to them in a way that you might want to have sex with them. But that isn't really um, the case with a lot of people in BDSM dynamics. So yeah, also what ends up happening is they end up going on, I guess you could say a date, they go to the Arboretum. And at the same time, they hear that the the girl that Jiwoon has been getting advice from is also going on a date. Turns out she was also going on a date at the Arboretum and she sees them, but doesn't say anything. Jiwoon and Jihoon decide to chain themselves together in a very subtle way. And um, it's kind of a funny scene because they go and they eat and they have to feed, uh, she has to feed him and shit. And there's a couple behind them being like, oh my God, why don't we do that? <laughs> 아, 아세요. 아, 어. 또 사람 들어왔어. 아, 오지 마. 아, 됐어. 하지 마. 아, 해봐. It's really cute. And, and then they get a random call from her friend, and the friend is apparently in a BDSM dungeon. The guy that she went on a date with turned out to be a really creepy dude who was a fake Dommy McDomerson and he was doing some really inappropriate shit. And I'm glad that they showed this because unfortunately with the, 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 the popularity of BDSM, there have been some people who get online and they start meeting people on dating sites and immediately trying to enter into a dynamic and that's just not the right way to do it. She had no reason to think that that was what was going to go on and it was a really scary situation. It was clear that he was going to violate her. She ends up kicking his ass, but they do end up rushing to save her. And that was obviously a really traumatic and upsetting experience for her. But it was a really good depiction of how things can go wrong. There was no negotiation, no mutual care. He wanted his Dommy McDomerson shit and she was supposed to just deal with it. And the thing that he kept saying is, yeah, I know you want it, I know you want it kind of thing. And it was just really gross. And I thought that it was good that they showed that because it really shows the contrast between those different types of relationships.
So I had an emotional thing I wanted to respond to while watching this. So their contract is about to be over. It was only for three months. And he goes and sets up this beautiful spread for the final date, I guess you could say. Now I neglected to mention this, but his ex is a person who he was dating who very much judged him for being into BDSM. He mentioned it at one point. She was really, really offended, upset about it, asked him if there was something wrong with him, asked him if he was abused as a child. And it essentially just ended really terribly. And she has a lot of emotions about it that have not been resolved on her end. And so throughout the film, she has been trying to get in contact with him, but of course he's been dodging her. And while he's setting up for the final date, she shows up and he has this beautiful spread set out and she decides to fuck it up and says to him, the only thing I'm going to say to you is that you will never be able to love again because you can't give anything up. And here's the thing, for a lot of people, BDSM is this dark secret that they have and feel as though if they were honest about their interest in BDSM, they would be rejected. And I was exactly in this position with a previous partner where I had dealt with a lot of trauma around sexual violence and things. And I was trying to sort of find healthy ways to express myself and to, to really understand my own boundaries and BDSM kind of became that thing for me. And I started privately researching it and talking to people the way that he does throughout the, the um, movie on various forums and things like that. And when I eventually told him what he said to me was that if I loved him, I would give it up. I would completely sideline this interest of mine. And the position that I came to was I, I at some point really understood that it was important for me to be in a relationship with someone who was comfortable with that. And of course, I didn't know that about myself, really, when I was 21. When I was 21, I was trying to be the complete opposite of who I am now, honestly. And I didn't want to have that conversation. But when you recognize that it's important to you, the relationships you're in that don't support that or allow space for that become really alienating and upsetting to be in. And so he is reaching this point where he realizes that there's nothing wrong with him being into what he's into and that there are people who will very much entertain that. But she is clearly in that very it's this or that mindset where she wants him to make a decision about leaving it behind or loving her. He's already moved on, but obviously still has lingering feelings about her. So I wanted to share because I had thoughts about that. <laughs> 그러니까 이런 얘기 여기서 듣고 싶지 않습니다. 좋아하는구나. 근데 그래도 징계는 가는 거야, 알지? Okay, so I just finished it and I have to say that this has this has been my favorite BDSM movie that we've seen. I love it so fucking much. So, here's how the movie ends, okay? So essentially what happens is they have their final scene and it it kind of doesn't go well because they are both having unrequited, unspoken feelings, right? And she actually does rope with him and leaves him kind of tied up. And as an aside, I wanted to say that I would say the only unrealistic thing about this film is how quickly she learns how to do all of these various BDSM things. I mean, a lot of this stuff, rope especially, is like things people spend years and years and years and years and years learning to do properly and safely. But I understand for the context of this movie, they couldn't do all of that. And they just kind of wanted to show a bunch of different types of BDSM, right? And so they have their like underwhelming scene and they go into work the next day. And after work, there is this mass text sent out. And this is a text of a audio recording of one of their scenes. And it causes this big controversy in the office. So they get called in to the boardroom to do, I guess, hearing or whatever. And 
they really start going in and like laughing at them. And of course, at first, Ji Hoon is kind of upset about it. He's kind of embarrassed, but it's but at a certain point, both of them decide to just own it. And they're like, yeah, we are into BDSM. That's what that is. And then when the higher ups ask, well, are you in love with her? Are you going to date her? Are you in a relationship with her or whatever? And of course, that is the question that has been wanting to ask the entire time. And he says that he loves her more than anything. He's loved her more than anyone. And, you know, that she is who he wants to be with. And so, of course, this encourages Jiwoon to also kind of perk up and be, yeah, this is what what, what the situation is. What y'all going to do about it? And what they do about it is they give them a six month suspension with a three month pay cut. And it's unsure if they're going to actually end up going back there. But what ends up happening is they continue on their relationship. They are in love. And that is how the film ends. Oh, my God, you guys. I think this is just such a good BDSM movie. I think the reason why this was such a good movie to me is that it didn't do what all the other films were doing that we watched. It didn't focus so harshly and heavily on the sex aspect of it. There was absolutely no nudity in this film. I mean, you barely even saw Sohyun's body. It was definitely a, it was it was a pretty like cute and clean cut BDSM film, if, if that's a thing. And I think honestly, that made it so that it focused so much on the power exchange and the negotiation and the healthiness of it. I think that this, unlike some of the other films that we've watched, is one of those films where you could watch it and get a lot of information about BDSM simply by just watching this you know, video. I love how they spoke about their own independent reasons for being into BDSM. You understand why Ji Woon eventually ends up opening up to entertaining the idea of being a master. She loves challenging herself. You see that in her work ethic. She's obviously overqualified for her job, but not really being respected. And he is a guy that in his daily life likes to win, likes to succeed. And like I said, his personal life is different from his BDSM life. And so I just thought that it was a really beautiful depiction. And I'm very curious how people reacted to it in Korea, because I don't, I know Korean society tends to be quite conservative. And Sonoshide is like one of the most I guess you could say respectable K-pop groups. So yeah, I really loved it. I loved her performance. I I thought that she was really, really good. I don't know if she's acted in other stuff. I think she probably has. That's just the vibe I got from this. I haven't looked it up. I don't actually know. I don't I don't like I don't watch a ton of um, dramas, but from my understanding, this had very much the drama vibe. So I might look that up. So who knows? Anyway, I really enjoyed this movie. I think you will too if you want to watch the whole thing. It's on Netflix. It is a two two hour long movie. I mean, I know this video gave all the things away, but you know, I still think that you should go and watch the full movie. So anyway, on that note, I would love to hear what other movies you should, that you think I should watch. I would love to watch the movies that feature a male submissive and a female dom because all the other movies we watched are just like, about some Dobby McDomerson abusing a woman <laughs> in a very unhealthy, messed up way. So I'm all about seeing more diversity. So let's, let's get some of that. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.